All right, all right. So I'm rolling, John. So uh, pleasure to meet you, and uh, welcome everyone. It's Greg Sullivan here with J City uh, and Superlogical uh, TV. Um, we've got uh, ex FBI X Man John D'Souza here. Uh, great to meet you today, and thanks for coming. Hey, Greg. It is great to be here with you today. I am so happy to be on Superlogical with you, and this is an awesome opportunity for me to be able to speak to your audience and speak to you people about the things that really matter. Thank you. Cheers. Well, I, I think you've got an amazing uh, history and, uh, you know, um, the counterterrorism unit and the paranormal desk. Uh, you know, I think you've got uh, tons to talk about. Uh, we, we just, uh, you know, our connection here was through I Live in Japan full time and and uh, you've had a series of books come out with with voice and um, uh, really amazing full color, you know, profile and and, uh, uh, you know, great um, way to present your work. What are you going to be um, uh, what out of all the books you've done with Japan, what are some like memories that stand out for you? Well, what I love about my books released in Japan, uh, which are the the truth is out there, volume one, truth is out there, volume two, truth is out there, volume three. It, it's it's about my uh, cases that I've worked over the years. Uh, you know, uh, for the FBI, I worked many uh, paranormal cases. I worked many cases where we were trying to figure out this this alien phenomena, uh, this UFO phenomena, and what the origins of it was. Uh, and so that's what I kind of deal with in my books because the truth of the phenomena is very different from what Americans believe it is at this point. And I've always found that the, that the Japanese people uh, are much closer to the truth on UFOs and alien visitors simply because the Japanese people are much more connected to their supernatural roots. They don't have this artificial division from supernatural reality that Americans have. And that's why it's very important to speak to the Japanese people about this. You know, people that understand it are much better than Americans do. Yeah, that we appreciate all the uh, work you've done, and and uh, for sure the um, the your your resume brings a lot of uh, you know uh, responsibility and respect to the the, the field. You know, um, obviously there are there are naysayers in every country. Um, what uh, how have you how have you changed in the last two years? You know, we're all in a new boat, so to speak, in a new dimension. Um, how have you kind of uh, you know, let's uh, let's take it from the, the get go. The the most updated uh, stance. You know, a lot of conferences have been canceled. Um, you know, going online. Uh, the whole research scene and and all the media formats are changing. How how are you dealing with that? And what's your do? What are your plans for twenty twenty two? You know, it's hard to um, it's hard to deal with a lot of these shifting realities that are going on. Uh, because of the um, supposedly this uh, COVID reality that we're dealing with these days. Uh, but we still have to reach out to people. We still have to speak to people uh, because these, uh, these things go back to the central philosophy of super logical. These things are, you cannot understand them in the rational mind. It's just not there. You need people like me, like you, to reach out to people and to make them understand they need to close their rational eyes and feel with the spirit and understand with the spirit the realities that we're living in here every day with alien visitors that are going that are becoming more and more visible every day these uh these uh tic tacs that are showing up that are showing up everywhere really and uh, that, you know, you have certain times uh, you have governments that are claiming, no, those are ours, or sometimes they're claiming they're not ours. And we know that. But whatever they're saying, the one thing we always know is that the governments are lying. They're lying. If they say they belong to them, then they're lying about that. If they say they don't belong to them, they're lying about that. And that's why we need to understand these realities. We need to reach out for these realities. And we need to contact each other, uh, whether it's through you know, online seminars or through any other means possible. Even if, it's, even if we have to get on our phones and do telephone groups, I mean, it doesn't matter, but we have to keep trying to reach out to each other to communicate these realities so that people can understand these things better. Because these things in 2022, I promise you, and I promise your audience, in 2022, these, uh, these realities are going to burst open. They're going to burst forth all over us here on the earth uh 
in my uh, one of my books, uh, The Extra Dimensionals, I have a series of 10 predictions that are in the back of the book that, uh, that are coming true right now. And I would, I would need an entire seminar to explain to people how these things are being fulfilled. We're seeing things, uh, we're seeing things from the moon, which I believe is an artificial, an artificially orbiting object that is filled with some kind of life, some kind of life. And it may, it's not biological life like we understand biological, but it is some kind of artificial intelligence life. And it is something that has kept us off the moon for many, many decades. Wow. Why? Because it went around to all the nations and it said to the nations, the Soviet Union, it said to the United States, shut down your space programs. Stop coming here right now. Mm. And we did. And we did. And now we have uh, certain nations like uh, India and China saying that they're landing things on the moon. Uh, and uh, I don't really believe it. I really don't. You yeah. see, um, you know, it's easy to create kind of film film that says you know you're doing this and that uh but the reality of it you have to you have to look as an investigator and you have to look at it very carefully so that's what i believe that is intense uh, john you got me with goosebumps here because uh um uh you know with regarding you mentioned the moon right there um the tonga uh eruption i did an entire live stream here in japan called the uh, ascension eruption you know, a lot of people are love to spin these as um, conspiracy events, like the the deep state and this and that. And I'm saying, you know, these are cosmic events, and and we got the message that um, that Tonga eruption, which was very uh, unnatural, you know, with the whole right. tsunami and everything, like the tsunami hit Tonga before the eruption. Some some witnesses say, and uh, we got the message that that had something to do with the quote unquote moon matrix. Right. And and so there you go. So the this we just connected two points right there. Totally. Right. And they're making a movie about it now because Hollywood works very closely with the cabal to uh, show the things that are happening. And now they're making a movie about exactly what I predicted called Moonfall. I think it's Moonfall or something like that. Right. And it shows artificial life leaving, cracking open in the moon and leaving the moon and coming to Earth for some reason. I don't know why, but... But there's, we're living through a period where not just conspiracies are being revealed, but there are conspiracies inside of other conspiracies that are being revealed. And I'll give you a quick example. Look, I, one of the predictions I made in my book, The uh, Extra Dimensionals, is that in the back is that uh, there would be entire towns, cities, towns that would be abducted, disappeared. In other words, that the abduction phenomena would go up to such an event, to such a scale, that entire towns would disappear. Well, here we've in the United States, we've had a couple of different phenomena where entire towns were destroyed mm. or kind of disappeared. I'll give you one example. Uh, two, uh, about a year ago, we had this incredibly mysterious, uh, 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 very odd, unnatural fire that happened in a town called Paradise, California, destroyed the entire town, supposedly. And, you know, and the, the thing is, the media always gives uh, false death counts because these stories have been arranged beforehand. Yeah. And so the media, they always say, oh, yeah, you know, 50 people were killed or some nonsense like that. But if you look at the devastation, the entire town disappeared. I mean, the whole town disappeared. And so I believe Paradise, California, what happened there is one of the examples of an entire town disappearing with a cover story, which was the fire, this weird fire that came up out of nowhere and was unstoppable and destroyed the entire town. But I believe that town has disappeared. And a lot of people believe that now. A lot of people now are saying that Paradise, California, uh, for some reason had positive alien entities in it that were working to help help us as a people mm. and that's why the cabal targeted it to be destroyed and to be disappeared right that's just crazy stuff yeah, yes it goes so deep they they had the picture of the lasers that started the fire like the laser technology right. and all stuff yeah the sun right yeah that's exactly a yeah, well, oh man, it's it's so um, you know the rabbit hole goes so deep. What you mentioned there about staying connected that that ties into my next question um, or my next comment is like you know 
I call it the the word that comes to me is like the bulldozer effect. And even for us who've been doing this for years, um, it was sort of it was it's really mind blowing how hardcore the uh, the spin has gotten. You know, with the with a with of course the whole um, January six and all this the entire to uh, um, Trump administration and all this stuff like. Uh, how he was targeted, um, not to get into any politics, but I'm just saying like the, the environment, it reminds me of my favorite sci-fi movie, which is a late sixties classic by French new wave, um, pioneer Jean-Luc Godard called Alphaville. And, and it's, um, it's, you should see it if you haven't. And, and in Alphaville, the AI, it's an AI, um, dystopian sci-fi, um, flick. And, um, and what they do is they start eliminating words from the dictionary. So it's just like it is now, like the hashtags, like the key words that we need to just, you know, quickly um, reference certain important topics. Those have been targeted like almost scalarly and they've become taboo. So even amongst researchers, it's like, I better not mention this lest I be um, blacklisted or, or blackballed or, or um, you know, um, cut out of Absolutely. the list. So the communication uh, control has just really turned up so intensely in the last uh, two years. How have you been dealing with that or how, feeling that or whatever? It's very, it's very difficult to deal with because all the tech giants are so, uh, are so hell-bent on the censorship and controlling speech and controlling what we say and all this. Things that we never thought could happen in America, in the United States at all. And yet here it is and it's happening. And always the people who are trying to control speech are always the bad guys, always. And uh, those of us who are trying to fight for freedom are always the good guys. That's just the way history has always shown it. And so, you know, I'm always still, I'm trying to always come up with fresh language, uh, fresh ways of referring to things, uh, fresh ways of saying things so that we escape the censors to a large part. And it is, it's difficult. It's hard. It's a lot of work, uh, but we got to do it. It's like being a rapper. <laughs> Super yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I consider myself kind of a rapper too. The NLP, mm. the NLP uh, effect. Yeah, for sure. Um, mm. Well, uh, yeah, that, I mean, we, could, we could go down, you know, any of these channels. Um, I, I wanted to uh, let, let me cut some to something local in your area. Um, I, I do, uh, you know, I've gone big time, you know, of course, into the UFO research and, and had a lot of contact experiences myself. And I guide uh, tons and tons of people here in Japan to their own uh, different experiences. Um, but uh, once in a while, we get asked to clear and uh, heal, you know, damaged land and, and stuff that refers to your your research as well with these kind of haunted spots like uh you know the et uh the ets with their technology can actually heal and remove what we might call disincarnates or or dis disgruntled uh you know um um astral beings you know uh, and 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 kind of like a damaged and violent energies um one of the things that believe it or not when i started going to arizona uh in after our first trip to sedona and uh and the Flagstaff. Um, for some reason, my guides brought in the the, wor uh, the message about that. Um, I think it's a mine or some sort of um, ancient Indians, a Native American site, uh, and outside of Phoenix. And that's a real like. There's been a lot of lost hikers and everything. I'm sure there's a lot of lore around that. What? It's not west uh, South Mountain. It's it's in the other direction in the west. I think. Do you, what kind of info do you have about that place? We have many places like that, uh, and, and the reason, and we have those places throughout Tucson, uh, Sedona, uh, uh, um, throughout uh, uh, Bisbee, Arizona, and many other areas. And, and, and the reason is because there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of um, Indian graveyards, murdered native peoples uh, throughout, throughout all of Arizona. And that carries with it a lot of power for good and for evil as well. Uh, so both, both angles exist and they're real. They're real. I mean, we have um, like one of the things that people uh, do here, and it's just it's it's real. They start these um, these recovery health centers, uh, recovery health centers for the for the spiritual health of people, and that's because they draw on the good energy from the earth, uh, the shamanic type energy, and it's real. It works, and people have like incredible, miraculous hearing healings here in uh in this area but um but you know but then there's always uh, the bad side as well there's also malevolent 
uh, spirits as well here that can uh, lead to a lot of destruction and a lot of uh, negative experiences as well. And that happens all throughout here. I mean, all throughout these areas as well. And I always, I'm always interested in investigating that kind of thing too. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think it's like part of the spiritual mastery that, uh, well, part of the Earth's evolution is that we could, we could heal that damage. I think they call it psychometrized, you know, that, that the wounds get psychometrized into the Earth grid. So that's all healing too now. Um, so a lot of sensitive people have been feeling those ancient wounds coming up. You know, I, I think 2021, there was some super heavy uh kind of like collective trauma releasing um, and, and what they call like the star seeds and light workers of the world where they, that we, pro, you know, we process that through, through the body. And, and so it really can knock you out. Uh, so having context for that is really helpful. Oh yeah, absolutely. The context is important and uh, the reality and the understanding that you, that we ourselves are also focal points for consciousness as well. And uh, it's our consciousness is what gives the power to whatever these miraculous healings, uh, these helping people to get better uh, spiritually or otherwise as well. And it's uh, really, really important to remember that. That's the reason why Jesus Christ said uh, every time Jesus healed somebody, he always used a weird phrase. He always said, uh, go ahead, your faith has made you well, your faith. He never said, I healed you, I did it, it's me. Uh, he always said, your faith has made you well. And that's a very uh, interesting thing to remember always when we're doing this work as well. That's a good good point, excellent point. Well, I know your other book, uh, Clear Hearers, that's a great um, word, because you know, this. Uh, uh, what, I've, what I've seen is like, you know, um, when, when getting involved with the spiritual community, um, uh, many, it's a, a, a lot of, uh, um, you know, it can become very, it's been very subjective, you know, um, psychics and mediums um, there. Uh, but what, when we go into this interdimensional phenomenon, the actual um, 5D and above, so to speak, the ET world, that, that, that actually demands a much higher level of kind of accuracy and, and clarity. So I love that word and the title of your book. Um, can you describe to the viewers what, what that means to you? And um, the, the Clear Hearers is, it's the most important thing I've ever written. It's, it's the uh, revelation to people of, of how they can communicate with and how they are constantly helped by this version of themselves that lives in eternity, that is actually already standing in the breath of God. And it is a version of you that is so far advanced of you that you would have a very hard time recognizing it. And the only real connection you have to it is, is love. The fact that it loves you, it still cares about you, and it still tries to help you in any way it can. But, um, but it's a little it's a little like an elephant trying to remember what it's like being an ant. Uh, uh, so so there's a lot of there's some difficulties there with communication and things like that. And that's what I try to, to show people and to help people with. And the other reason why clear errors is so important is because we are presently living through a period when uh, the governments and the cabal are using what we call voice to skull technology. Uh, in order to counterfeit, to counterfeit this communication from your higher self to you and trying to pretend that it is. As a matter of fact, um, very recently, uh, we had both uh, David Icke and Cliff High, two men that I follow. I follow on a consistent basis. Yeah. They both said the same thing. They both said, uh, 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 Icke and uh, Cliff High both said that the cabal is using voice to skull technology to send out messages to people uh, that basically says the same four words. Just take the vax, it'll be fine. Yeah, Just yeah. take the vax, it'll be fine. And they've had people reporting to them that they keep hearing this phrase in their head as if they're saying it to themselves. Yeah. And yet they know it's not them. Yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah. That's one of the things that's uh, predicted in the, the clear hearers that is going on right now. And it's being used on many other occasions than that. So that's why we need to, we need to figure out recognizing the real clear hearing voice, what it is, what it sounds like, what it feels like. That's, that's the important, that, that's the most important thing about clear hearers. 
Yeah, that's so so amazing. Uh, and you know, the the uh, stream of consciousness has all you know that's um, awakened the the inner sensitivity. And and you know, there's a lot of other people's and emp most people interested in this topic are actually maybe what you might call empaths. I find, and so they're taking on other thought streams from living from relatives or people around them. Um, yeah. And it overrides their own stream of consciousness. So, yeah, going in and then connecting into the higher realms, that's that's even, the pipe is very small at first. So we, we um, I'm working on a book about that kind of um, training right now. Myself, I, I know exactly what you mean because um, I've had uh, people in, in our um, network here in Japan who, who were bloggers and then were trying to be uh, derailed by uh, remote influencing. And uh, they could actually see who they're... Yeah. They, they saw military like uh, they said uh, this is not a, an ET. It's a they said it's an American military person, and then also um, for the last year, John, uh, last night was pretty intense. I've been getting hit from with this sort of whatever scalar. It really comes in in the middle of the night, and man, this it, it, I had experienced it once or twice. You know, when I brought a researcher to Japan, or, or you know, when things were really, really intense. But it has been nightly for the last year, where this sort of um, scalar attack, um, uh, ELF, you might call it, um, coming at the spine and pelvis, and it's been so consistent that I actually threw my back out in December. Um, so it's been a, a really intense, uh, yeah, so that sort of like, um, subtle programming is, is totally real. I know exactly what you mean. Absolutely. It is. It's absolutely real. And, um, people have to be prepared for it and they have to learn, they have to learn how to contend with it, to recognize it and to use discernment, spiritual discernment so that they know when they're being attacked, you got to be able to know that and then you can address it. And then you got to um, take measures to protect yourself because you can't. I mean, that's I have charms that I use uh, for constant protection uh, that I keep close to my body. I always keep close to my body. And if I am experiencing an attack, I will actually uh, pull these charms out and use them in order to counter the effects that I'm that I'm being uh, uh, attacked with. And it works. That's it works because my faith makes me well. That's totally key, yeah. How do you find, uh, uh, speaking of which, I'll bring up a topic that's sort of, um, it, it, um, speaking in these sort of like weaponized spiritual agendas, you know, what we're talking about, we have a, a very, I think, neutral mm -hmm. perspective, like we, we're ready to accept anything that's out there, and a true researcher should be, you know, willing to accept any case and, and and apply their their reasoning or, or their understanding to it. But, um, you know, we've had a, a, a kind of a flame up in the last few years in Japan here of um, of sort of the, uh, what you might call the uh, the secret, sort of a mag um, what is it, magical thinking, uh, and what they now call spiritual bypassing, which is, oh, there's no need to look, focus on any of that dark stuff, um, you know, let's just focus only on the light. And, and, and you know how like the cabal has manipulated that or the powers that be, the powers that were have manipulated that very cleverly. So um, that sort of, uh, make, it's a giant excuse so that, you know, they say like, don't blame such and such, you know, it's all your fault. So the, the, the law of attraction element comes in that everything you're experiencing is your own, of your own making. And, uh, and what the guides, my AT guides told me is the way to deal with that is, um, is uh, to tell people that that is true on a personal level, like your personal sphere. Because a lot of spiritual well and, and new age uh, info is, is based on uh, personal uh, wellness and you know it's a um, self help um, has a root in self help, but it's not the case on the macro, and that's what we're talking about. So we're we're looking at the macro level, the entire planet and and the history of humanity, hidden history of humanity. That's totally different. So uh, do you understand what I mean? Have you heard about spiritual bypassing? It's sort of like the people don't want to look at any of the shadow. Um, have you ever encountered that? Uh, uh... No, because um, I, I, do, I do believe that where attention goes, focus grows. And, and so you can't spend, you can't pay too much attention and deference to dark spiritual forces. I think it does increase their power. I think if you can, if you can withdraw attention and focus from them, I think it does help. It does help your situation. And yeah, the macro does, the macro matters. The macro absolutely does matter. Uh, but, but you're still an individual within 
this uh, this situation, and you're an individual consciousness, so you have to tend tend to that. You have to tend to your individual consciousness first before you can help others. Very much like the person who gets the oxygen mask in the in the plane, you can't be putting them on other people's faces until you put it on your own first. Yeah. So yeah, I, I do I do believe in that, and um, yeah, the dark spiritual forces are real, and there are times when we have to contend with them, but then we have to find. We have to find solutions then, real solutions for contending with them, and use those solutions always, all the time. That's excellent. Yeah, what I, I didn't uh, one piece one piece I missed. Sorry, there with the t um, in, with the introduction of that question was that um uh, in Japan like um you know a lot of um people who are pro who are promoting this sort of um, control agenda often as you know doors open and they're all of a sudden all over the headlines they're on billboards everywhere they they really shouldn't been or weren't before so we had that happen in here in japan where it's like who the hell are these people who is this guy <laughs> and, um, and then what they're espousing is you know it really becomes um it makes our job even more difficult where it's like you know um if you don't you know uh it becomes a new mem you know the, like this mem creation the instant creation yeah. of kind of control memes, memes. So yeah, you know, yeah. So that that's something I've been contending with. So here I am trying to um, make a book with the same uh, different publisher that you work with, but um, and then this publisher promotes this this sort of um, this real popular speaker, and then all of a sudden we're in their shadow. Although although we've been doing it way longer, and it's like here comes finally a chance to share our deepest truth, and but we've got this sort of like. You know, noise running in the background. It's like, wait a minute, what do you mean, Gregory? Uh, what, what do you? I thought that no one says that. What are you talking about? And it's like, you know, it's like, so that I've been kind of painted into a corner. That's part of this whole bulldoze, um, bulldoze effect that I've been talking about um, for a moment. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, and, and and you know, that's a that's a real thing. It's a real thing, and uh, you know, we have to contend with that stuff all the time. And, and the best thing. And the best thing we can do is, uh, I think, is just to uh, uh, appropriate and use the messages of that of those other speakers and show how we are in alignment with what they're doing as well. And uh, we're, you know, and it's, uh, and we're all in a cooperation here, you know, as as much as possible. That's the best way, I think. I think to contend with that sort of thing. Yeah, a good point. Good point. Okay, well, yeah, that's great. Uh, uh, we've covered some real amazing uh, points here. What, how have you, um, lastly, like, what do you, uh, do you see, uh, I mean, Tucson, what, what an amazing uh, skies you got down there. How, um, have you ever uh, tried uh, the, the C5 protocol or do you have the app or whatever? Do you see ships yourself at night? Um, yeah, I, I have my own protocols uh, I, that I use uh, uh, through my own meditations and my own work uh, because I've, I've always kind of been in consistent contact uh, with uh, alien visitors in general, uh, sometimes, usually for good, usually for good. And um, so it's something I've always done on my own. And, uh, and yeah, I, I expect that contacts will be increasing in 2022 for everyone, not just for people who use protocols, but for everyone. And, uh, and people are gonna be going nuts reaching out for you and for me uh, to find out what's really going on. And uh, because at that point, it's going to be too late for them to educate themselves. Yeah. It really is. And they're going to have to, they're going to have to uh, run around in a panic and find people who know what's really happening. Because at that point, if they're still listening to the governments, uh, they're going to be in big trouble, big, big trouble <laughs> because the government's not going to, not going to tell them anything good or anything true. That's where, that's where we are. Very key. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing with all the, um, Oh, uh, with all the, the narrative is just crumbling. You know, this whole, uh, Spotify Joe Rogan thing is really, uh, flaring up, you know, the, the, although, um, the real researchers and the people speaking the truth have 
been painted in their corner, there's always like these rays of light that shine through and, and um, you know, people are with a questioning mind are, are getting more and more, I think, they're getting more and more th stuff, to, great points to think about. Um, how, uh, uh, one last comment here, John, is that you, you've, uh, I don't know if you've spoken about it in your, in your books at all, but with the whole body double and, um, you know, the two YouTubers um, who I, I did events with last year with voice, uh, Ichibe and uh, Joestar, um, uh, yeah. How um, he uh, they've gone a lot about the um, the gum people and the gum mass. Where did you first find yeah. out about that or encounter that? Because you know this the most obvious example is with um, Kim Jong Un, the leader of North Korea. I mean, the real guy is dead. He's he's gone, he, and and um, he yeah, he has like ten different doubles. Um, it's it's so obvious. He disappeared from the yeah. media for like eight months in twenty twenty ish. And then all of a sudden, who the hell is this guy? Like this other complete yeah. comes out. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, Ichibe and uh, Joe Star, they know the real deal with all that stuff. Uh, yeah, these are these are a lot of a lot of doubles. Some of them are clones. Some of them are the rubber mask people, but it's, but that's not a good way to describe it. This is like a silicone that is actually alive. Um, I think they used it on on the old Mission Impossible movies. Uh, where it's like the silicone that's actually alive and molds itself with memory to your face because they had the, the silicone program to remember what your face looks like and then it programs itself so that it looks exactly like it. It's crazy, but they've had this technology for a long time. And if you want to know the first persons that actually did this, it was way back in like 1960 when the cabal had their laboratories experimenting with this, uh, with the creation of clones, straight up clones. You know, we're not talking. And they, the first successful globally known clone was, you may know, uh, Paul McCartney's replacement when he died at a very young age with the Beatles. Yeah. And they already, or I don't know, maybe they killed him. I don't know. But <laughs> whatever happened, they had a clone ready to replace him, who's right. actually taller than he was, right. taller than he was, and it had some little defects. Uh, it didn't have musical talent that he did, uh, but they used it and it went in there and it uh, and it's the thing is still alive today, uh, pretending to be uh, Paul McCartney. But after that, the uh, the uh, cabal started replacing a lot of political leaders and all this, but they're also using the rubber mask people, the, the other, sometimes they they use actors as well. They use actors with the silicone living masks as well. And that's, that's really real. We just had, uh, we just had this individual, uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, replaced, uh, by someone that looked, looked like 20 or 30 years younger than her. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Hillary, Hillary has been, has been dead for like a year and a half. And she's got half a dozen Hillary's running around for her, sometimes in the same places, in the same places at the same time. Yeah. And the media doesn't care. You know, uh, Trump has a uh, he has a double. Uh, and we don't again, we don't know whether it's a clone or rubber mask person or, or what it is. But Trump has a uh, clone that is at the Miralago Golf Resort. Yeah. Uh, it's this it's this guy who's a lot heavier than he is. But the face is exact. I mean, the face is exact. And the reporters know that that's not really Trump, but they don't care. They don't care because they get to criticize him and they get to say, oh, look, he's playing golf all day long. That's all he does. Yeah. And really, that is all the clone does. He just he just does that all day. And uh, people don't care. It's it's become it's becoming kind of like a joke at this point. All of our political uh, Justin Trudeau showed up in a video the other day where he looked completely different from how he's looked in the past. Yeah, so yeah. now we're thinking that Trudeau has been maybe arrested and maybe he's been replaced by a clone as well, yeah. like uh, Governor, Governor Newsom was uh, several, um, several weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, Newsom of California was disappeared. He yeah. disappeared for 10 days. Yeah, when and then were... miraculously, this guy shows up who's pretending yeah. to be Newsom. Anyway, I could go on with that forever. So that's that's a real thing, and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. They're using more and more of these clones. So, yeah, don't but it will be exposed. It will be exposed eventually, and we will have all these clones exposed because what's going to happen is all of their deeds, all of the things that they signed as political leaders, are going to be um, taken away 
They're going to be uh, uh, just dis disintegrated, and everything that they did is going to be uh, disappeared. Uh, and so that's why it's going to be eventually, it's going to be revealed with time. Yeah, I mean, talk about hidden in plain sight. I mean, yeah, there are amazing videos comparing the original Paul versus Fall and his playing style as a lefty bass player and, and how yeah. it was different. And, and um, you know, when uh, the wife left him, she said cryptically, like, you, you li I can't believe how much you've lied to me. And, and, uh, and then, um, what was it, um, you know, d recently, uh, Dark Journalist uh, on YouTube, you know, he did the UFO uh, State of the Union, and he, he talked about how Newsom and uh, Trudeau have kind of gone past their cabal expiry date, so they've been taken out, and you right. know, there was a backlash against their heavy mandates, so that sort of test in Canada and California and New York kind of flopped. Um, and then, of, of course, obviously, with all of uh, um, Biden's c cognitive uh, questions, you know, we're we're right now we're on about I, I count the uh, third or fourth Joe Biden from <laughs> from like 20 years ago. We're up to like number four at this point. It's, and, and the guys don't look anything like the original Joe Biden. If you just all you have to do, the pictures are out there. You yeah. just go and you look. You can't shorten a person's jaw. You can't do that. Yeah. So yeah. it's like the, the Bidens have been copies for a long time. Hidden in plain sight. Yeah, that's a really uh, key key topic. Are you going to blog more about that in in the future, or, or uh, is that coming out in a yes. video? Yes. Yeah, I'll be I'll be definitely talking about that because the Japanese audiences are are really interested in that, uh, and so that's something that we need to uh, develop more, for sure, uh, as far as uh, proof positive about the clones and the copies and the doppelgangers and all that. That's a that's an important topic because it, it shows. It shows that we're we're basically being asked to continue living in a fantasy world. Yeah, uh, and and that's what they're they're asking us not to recognize that this is a fantasy world, and that our leaders are mostly clones and copies um, because they want to maintain the power in this small group of globalist leaders. Uh, there and they uh, that's and that's what they do. So, so yeah, that's a very important topic to develop in the future. Yeah, I would say they've gone a little bit too far with the um, Kennedy is still alive, and and recently a picture came out with John Lennon uh, still alive. That, that there are there are there is this info mixed in with that, like with the the fake pictures. But uh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 and those are and those are CIA shops that are just in charge. They sit around and they're just in charge of creating disinfo. Yeah. When, uh, whenever people start finding out, hey, they're finding out too much about the clones and the copies. Yeah. Let's yeah. Uh, generate some crap. Let's generate some stuff. And so they do, and it gets distributed, and uh, that happens all the time. They're, that's their only job is to do that. And, and they do that also with paranormal events. Like whenever a real paranormal event occurs uh, and is seen by a lot of people, yeah. uh, they sit around and they create artificial uh, copies of stuff to throw up into the atmosphere and so that you won't pay attention to that and you won't look at it and you'll say, oh, it's all fake. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's something that they do with CIA shops all the time. They try and roll the entire topic into a, is spin it up, spin it up. Yeah. Exactly. So, so even the, exactly. real, the real researchers, that's what they call blowback, right? You know, the real researchers right. kind of blowback. So you have to be super discerning. Yeah. Right, exactly. Oh, you worked for the CIA. Okay, gotcha. No, no, no. Uh, our <laughs> channel got a, um, well, I've been trained by the, the, the uh, I've been trained telepath telepathically by my support system. So I say see through all those smoke screens. Um, but nice. my channel got a channel ban. Um, I, I predicted the election results um, in on 11 11 of 2019. I predicted the election results and I also. I was like the edge of my um, my abilities, but I also predicted the Afghan pullout, which was that you know wow. although the election was going to be spun, um, that it was necessary for the the left side now had to wake up, and that's happening right now. This this last year was all about that, so I got a lot of blowback, and and uh, my channel was then put on a shadow ban, so um, it's wow. really, really was um, pulled down. Uh, last wow. quick uh, topic, John, uh, and we'll wrap up here. Um, uh, I'm ready. I commend you about the, uh, it's a little bit of a taboo one, and, um, but the uh, Atacama humanoid, you were one of the few people who, your, your topic in the Sharon book, uh, Fake Science, I commend you um, for supporting Dr. Dr. Rear on that, because even the people here who kind of like um, were supposed to be on 
his side uh, uh, really um, spun that and went with the um, the uh, what is it the uh, fake academic journal. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a taboo topic. But had had you encountered any other um, uh, um, like little I don't want to call them mummies, but um, relics like that? Absolutely. You know, and Dr. Greer, if if he was to take his correct place in history, he is the uh, the first real, I, I, I don't like to say it, but the first real scientist, I don't even like that title anymore, but he's the first real scientist to reveal non-human indigenous life on earth. And he did it. He's the one who revealed it. Unfortunately, in 2012, uh, he made the mistake of still trusting scientific authorities, uh, in particular at Stanford University uh, Science Department, and uh, he trusted them to give further verification to his discovery, to what he brought to the world. And he handed it all off to them. And, you know, and I investigated it after the fact, but I came to the same conclusions that Dr. Greer did. This was genuine, non-human, uh, indigenous life, apparently, uh, here on Earth. And it was, you know, it wasn't an alien because that's the trick the media, worldwide media does is to always say everything, everything's an alien. No, that's an alien. You're, you're saying that's an alien. Well, no, we're not. We're not saying that. We're just saying it's not human. Yeah, yeah. And it obviously was not human. And those are all the preliminary findings that Dr. Greer made and that Stanford confirmed yeah. was that it was correct. It was non-human life of some sort, biological life here on Earth. And that's what they found. But, you know, then, as scientists always do, they did the fakery, and they did the fakery later, and they did the, the long DNA uh, chain tests and so forth, which if they were, if they really showed what they said they, they did, they would make those public. They never did. Yeah. Why didn't they? Because it doesn't show anything that they're saying, you know? It's like when these labs... When these uh, people turn in, uh, they get samples of Bigfoot tissue and hair, and they turn it into the labs. And they're like, well, the labs aren't, aren't going to lie. Yeah. Well, no, the labs have to lie. Because why? Because they get licensed every year by the state. Yeah. And the state is not going to renew their licenses if they say, oh, Bigfoot is non-human life yeah. that we found. We've got these tissue samples. There it is. No, labs lie. They lie every day. Yeah. Otherwise, they can't keep their licenses. And yeah. that's what we're finding out here. And when I was at Gaia, I was at Gaia Channel. When uh, Gaia Channel came up with the, um, the Nazca mummies. Yeah. Again, genuine, non-human life that was discovered. And they had the DNA samples. They showed that those things were real. But what did they do? They went to the labs, <laughs> all the different labs. Yeah. And what are the labs going to do? The labs are going to fake their results. No lab is going to be the first lab to say, hey, we found non-human life. Here it is. This is it. It's, a, it's some kind of bipedal creature that is not human, but it is here and it's real. And it's, here it is. They're not going to do that. Yeah. So anyway, yes, there have been many, many instances. As long as you have labs, you will have laboratories and science departments. You will have lies told to people because that's their job their job is not to find new knowledge for you their job is to cover up knowledge and yeah. keep you inside the scientific mold yeah. that they have created if anything doesn't fit in there they're not going to find it that's it so and it's very sad but this con has worked for hundreds of years since galileo it has worked and so they're trying to keep this up and now this this has come to its logical conclusion where science is trying to kill people at this point and the medical industry is trying to kill people and commit these terrible genocides as well so i don't know if i can mention that but yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's where we are now that's it we're, we saw it coming we we know we were told it was coming and now it's here and it's yeah we're 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 all in the thick of it so yeah but thank exactly. you uh, those were just some key points that i think people would be interested in because you know it was it wasn't it was um it was case closed on the positive side in a lot of our minds, but then you know all these channels and of uh and then media um attack it so violently um 
that even even the fans will start to doubt themselves. So yeah, thanks. Exactly. Cool. Well, thank you so much, John. I appreciate it, and I look forward to having you again uh, for our Japanese festival, uh, you know, YouTube fest this year. And um, awesome. We'll be, in touch, uh, uh, we'll be in touch again soon. Thanks a million. And uh, I'll link oh. up all your info in the um, and uh, in your website in the description uh, of the video. Good deal, Greg. Thank you so much. It's great being on. Super logical. Cheers, man. Thanks. Good stuff. Good stuff.